And the thoughts and the questions begin to arise in my head like, God, why? Why is there so much evil in the world today? Why are lost people not getting saved? Why is America slowly turning and looking like Sodom and Gomorrah day by day? And God said, because there's too many Christians. I'm going to say that again. There are too many Christians and not enough Christians. There's the big difference. If you don't believe me, look right in this house right now. There are too many Christians and not enough Christians. The Christians have forgotten how to carry the tea. It's the missing tea. I got the tea. Not, well, I mean, you could say this is sweet tea. This, uh, this is sweet tea. But this right here. It's not, we, we talk about it in the spiritual, but it's, it's a literal physical thing. Because living for Jesus ain't easy. It's tough. But no word, Jesus didn't say, follow me, it'll be easy. Follow me, it'll be better. Yeah. Follow me, I got the sweet tea. <laughs> he didn't say none of that. He said, follow me, come after me, deny yourself, take up your cross daily, and follow me. It's just an example. It's a sign of what he did, but now it's an example that I need to do just as he did. So this is what it really looks like. I've got this. Now you can best believe. Oh, I know. You see it? This is my good side. But you best believe over time, you just carry in this cross in a, on a, in a given day, it gets tired. It gets tough. Reminds me of another story just the other day. I just told it to Tyler. I was driving a truck. And I come up and I didn't realize it. Big old snake in the road. Big old snake. And I, as soon as I ran over, I looked at him. He's just sitting there. I was like, I got him. <laughs> I hit him. I had sat there and so I went and delivered my package. Now, well, before I did that, I got out because I took a picture and, you know, sent it, sent it to Mama, sent it. To, uh, he was dead. There was blood coming out of his mouth and everything. Laid him back down and rode and delivered my package, and I had to come right back by that way. And when I rode by, he was gone. How in the world? Ran right over his neck, everything. Joker was bleeding. I done held him, taking pictures dead and now he's gone and all I could think about again was the fact that same way Satan tempted Jesus it's all for a season yep. he comes he's in the way he's there to bother but just because I look like I got him defeated and just looks like I got him mm, you dead it's just for a season That's why I need Jesus more and more every day. Amen. But again, when Jesus said, come and watch with me and pray with me for an hour, lest you enter into temptation. Amen. There's the key. I've got to seek after him to where I can avoid temptation. Because when I'm seeking him and I'm crucifying this flesh and denying this flesh and I'm putting it on this cross and I'm carrying it daily, I'm not thinking about anything. To, to, I'm putting on my armor of God every day, every morning. So anytime something tries, why in the world do you think it's so easy? As soon as you stop, as soon as there is that gap that says, you know, I need to get a little rest. We're good. Hey, um, how's 4.30 sound, Jesus? As soon as there's that gap, why do you think it's so much easier to fall into temptation? Because you let your guard up. As soon as you let your guard up. But when I'm sitting there 
denying this flesh and I got this cross, that means everything, my life in general, I'm living for you and I'm carrying this. He died for sickness, everything in general. So same way again, when I get sick, I don't deny, I don't crucify this flesh. I don't care what's going on. I am coming to your house. Yeah. Back in the day, well, it's what we used to see when people were sick, they came to his house. Yeah. Even let's go even more back in the day to Jesus. When people were sick, where did they go? They went to where he was at. Now we just like to use it as an excuse. Some are literally using their cross as an excuse. Instead of carrying it, well, yeah. instead of using it as an example, we're using it as, as an excuse. Well, I'm not feeling it. I, news flash, you're not the only one. Life in general is tough. Life every day is tough. It's not supposed to get easy. Jesus said in John 16, 33, he said, in this world, you will have tribulation. Amen. But in me, you have peace. Amen. And he said that, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. So even though it's tough, it's tough, I'm still cheering. I'm still happy that I can sit here and carry my cross because I know he, if he can do it, if he overcome the world, then I can follow his example and do the same. If he can do it, I can do it. It's just that simple. But we make it so complicated. It's not that complicated. Just pick it up and carry it. And then, even when times do get super, super tough. Come here, Daddy. Stand right here. Staying right here. Really? Even in times when it's super tough, super, super tough, even Jesus says, come. Come to me all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It's just always the same thing. It's a cycle that repeats itself. So the way I look at it is if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. And then again, when Jesus is just getting so tough, it's getting, it's getting hard. He says again, come, come. And here I can lean on him. Because when I come to Jesus, I get rest. He gives me rest. But 1 Chronicles 16, 11 says, seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. Amen. Right in the middle, when I come to Jesus, he knows I'm weary. He knows I'm heavy. He even said, take my yoke upon you. For his yoke is easy. He's not saying, oh, it's going to be easy walking. It's not going to be better living. Yeah. He, know, he did it. He knows how hard it can be. He knows it gets weary. He knows it gets heavy. But that's why he says, come to me and I'll give you rest. But when I come to him and I begin to seek him and I seek his face continually, that's where he gives me strength. Because when I know he's there and when I feel his presence, all of a sudden I'm getting my strength back. I can go another day. Let's do it again. All of a sudden, cross not that, not that heaven no more. Man, feel, my God, I done got strong. It's not that bad anymore. But there are times he does choose to let go. To let us walk. Why? God allows things because again, what happens when I begin to feel the weight again? It keeps me coming back. It keeps me coming back. That's the key. He knows, but I've got to continue trusting him. It's a daily sacrifice, a daily death to this world, but I've got to carry it. I've got to live it because this is how I live a bigger life. 
It's not about living a better life. I want to live bigger. Bigger, meaning every opportunity that God gives me to showcase His glory. That He's real. He's coming back. He died for you and me. That's what keeps me going. That's why I can't stop. That's why I got to keep fishing. I act like a little kid every time I catch a big fish. Yeah. Honestly, I act like a kid every time I catch a fish. Tyler will be the first one to tell you. Brother Danny will probably tell you. Daddy, t Brother Rob, man, if I hook a fish, it's a big one. Yeah. Because it is a big one. Every fish is a big one. Because that's one more. One more that gets to inherit the kingdom of God. One at a time. One fish at a time. Sometimes you do catch two at a time. But one fish at a time. Why do you think sometimes we have to leave the 99 to go after the one? It's easy talking to the believers. Like I said, it's easy. But sometimes there's that one fish. You got to say, all right, y'all believers. I know y'all living, but I got to go, go catch that one. But I don't ever want to let go. I got to keep carrying it. Because if he died for me, if he came to die for me, why can't I do the same? I've got to die to this world every day. My feelings, it's here. My thoughts, they're here. My wants, they're here. My, de my desires, they're here. All I know is one thing, is I'm here for him and by him. And I'm the vessel he's going to use. But I choose to live a bigger life. The question is, how many of y'all want to start and begin to live a bigger life? It's not too late. No matter your age, no matter how young you are, you can choose to live a bigger life by doing it the right way. Jesus shows us all throughout his word how we are out to do it. We can do it. If he can do it, we can do it. We just got to obey him. It's like the saying, when somebody says, I love you more, we usually like try to say, again, in comparison or competition, like, no, I love you more than you love me. But no, when I say I love you more, I mean I love you more than this world has to offer. I love you more than the good times. I love you more than the hard times. I love you more than anything. And when I say I love you, I've got to keep your commandments. So when he speaks his word and he says what he says, not only do I hear and listen, but now I've got to go out and do it. We see Peter, he finally got it. He finally got it where he said again, he left us an example that we should follow his steps. My soon-to-be mother-in-law got me some cool, cool sandals. I wore them to the beach the other day. They got a cross in the sandal on the bottom. Now I was going to bring him and forgot all about it. Forgot all about it. I felt, I, I mean, I was, uh, ain't the first time I forgot him. I was like, gosh, am I? But then things are awesome. It's got John 3.16 on the front, on the top. But on the bottom where you walk, there's a cross that leaves a cross implant in the ground. They are the coolest flip-flops ever. And I got some bass flops, okay? I got some fish flops. Then things are awesome. Then things look like some straight up fish. I, 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 I wear them, but then things with the cross, man. But that's a literal thing. When I take every step, I want people to see the cross. Because again, to others it may seem foolish, but for me, it's the power of God. In this world, we will have trouble, Job 5, 7. We will. Things do get tough. It's part of it. But 
It's worth it. Every day is worth it. I just got to hold on. Keep on. One day at a time. Every day is a new day. It's not a new day to live a better life. Get things going. No. It's a new day to start all over. Like God, you get... You bless me with another day for a reason. I don't care who you are. I don't care how bad your day can get. Don't let things get to you. My thing is, if I got up this morning and I was able to, man, you ain't getting me in a negative mood whatsoever. I'm alive. I'm living. Life may get tough and it may get you down, but regardless, you got to stay positive. It's no coincidence. This right here looks like a positive sign. Do some addition tonight. Add the cross back to being where it's supposed to be. It's time to be Christians. It's time to start carrying our cross. It's time to pick up our Bibles. It's time to start getting back to where we're supposed to be. And living as the example and following in His exact footsteps. That's why I seek Him. That's why I let His Spirit guide me. Because I don't want to step over here. No. He's already stepped where I need to step. I just need to go right behind Him where He's already stepped. Amen. It's literally, it's so simple that it's just mind-blowing. It's that simple. But we choose to complicate it because we can't do that one part of deny the flesh. That's the part that always gets in the way. When we come after him, he tells us how to do it. We got to deny ourselves. When we get there, my gosh, you were almost there. Now you just got to pick it up and walk and follow in his steps. Follow the example that he left. No more excuses. No more excuses. You either pick it up or you just choose to leave it out and just say, I'm a Christian. Yeah. But as for us others, we're going to walk on. Yeah. We're going to keep on. I ain't, I could care less. Or how have you said it? I don't know. People tell me I couldn't care less. Whatever it is, I don't know. But in general, what I mean is it doesn't, bother the fact at times that I may hurt feelings because God has given it, us all a voice that we've got to speak and it may hurt feelings right then and there but I promise you it's stuck in there it's a seed planted and God will take care of the rest Amen. all we can control is just obey what God says. Just obey his word and be ye doers of the word. Amen. Amen. So in closing, I just want to say again, who wants to live a bigger life? Think big. Everything. When, I, when you see the word big now, I want you to imagine the eye as a cross right in the middle. Every situation now, it's like, God, how can I make this big? What can I do right here to go big? Yeah. Step out of your comfort zone and try something big. Yeah. Yeah. Go above and beyond. Yeah. That's it. It's all on us. At that point, there's nothing more I can say or do it's just up to us and whether we want to pick it up and carry it because too many today they just leave it sitting I'm saved it's there oh yeah it's relieving when you put it down Woo! they got a hold nothing But there's a reason. When you're holding something, you know it's there. You feel the weight. 
you feel, you feel it. But for me, I'm one, I'm the type of guy like, once I get going, I've got to get it done. Once I get started, I've got to, I just want to get done. I don't want to push, I just want to finish. We have got to fight the good fight of faith and stay on course. We've got to lay hold on eternal things, as 1 Timothy 6, 12 says. Lay hold on it. Just hold on. Don't give up yet. When I want to give up is when I'm standing in His presence in heaven and the thing I give up is the very crown He gives me. Because at that point, it's like, it's finished. Just as Jesus said, it is finished. We'll be able to say the same thing. Like, it is, it is finished. Because I walked in His feet, step, His very steps. I followed His example and died to this world. And it is finished. The question is, are you going to finish? Or are you going to be a quitter? Are you going to take this wonderful gift, this sign, are we going to use it as an example? Or are we going to use it as an excuse? Life is tough. But you got to tough it. You got to give it all to Him. Same thing with Peter. I, I don't look at it any other way. When I sit there and look at the scripture of 1 Peter 5 and 7 where it says, cast your cares on him for he cares for you. The way I look at it, you know, so many people say they can cast something, but when I thought about casting again and fishing, when I cast something, I can retrieve it back in. Just because I cast it over there, I still can retrieve it back in. So to me, I looked at that and I was like, now there's something more here. The scripture says, cast your cares on him. So as a fisherman, I understand I can get hung. I can get hung up. Things, I, I want to get that lure back. You get hung up on, on stumps, logs, some wood. When we cast our cares on him, I want you to imagine casting that lure and getting it hung on him. But again, here's the thing, it's still connected. You gotta cut it off. You gotta cut ties with it. Because then, when you retrieve it back, you get to tie a whole new lure on. You literally then cast it on him. Like God, I've casted my cares on you. Life gets tough, but the cares of this world Cast it on him. It's what he died for. Yes. But again, just come to him. Just come to him. Yeah. Deny your flesh. Deny yourself. It's time to start taking up our cross daily and following him daily. Amen. Psalms 42 8 says, I make the prayer unto the God of my life. Amen. Like, he's the God of my life. He's just not my God. He's the God of my life. Amen. Meaning, He is my life. Yes. He's the reason I'm living. He's the reason I'm here. Amen. If He can do it, we can do it. Amen. He came as flesh, became man, and did the thing that we, we couldn't do. Yeah. But now that He did it, He's calling us to do the very same thing. But we've got to die to this world. We can't die for our own sins, but He wants us to die to this world to come to Him. Amen? Yeah. That's right. So let's do just that. Some of you right now, y'all could be already carrying your cross. It's getting hard. Just come after Him. Come seek Him. He'll give you strength. But we just got to have faith, trust, and believe. And everything that we do, it's not for nothing. 
we're living for something. Amen. We choose to live a bigger life. We got to start choosing to live a bigger life every day. Amen. And it starts by taking up our cross and living and carrying it daily and living out as a Christian. Yeah. It's time to be some Christians in action. Yep. Remember, no man forbidding him. Acts ain't done. We're in action right now. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Just do it. As Mary said, whatever you ask of you, just do it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I think that's all I got. Uh, to Jesus be the glory. Now look, Dylan said a couple of times, he said it's time to take up the cross. He said it's time for Christians to get in action. Luke 9, 23, he said it's daily we take up the cross. In a day, there's 24 hours, so a day is about time. Time, time, time. In reference to time, God uses the word redeeming. Redemption in Ephesians 5.15, redeeming the time because the days are evil. He's our redeemer. That's what he did on the cross. He redeemed us from our sins. Amen. Somebody say, Jesus had time for me. He had time for you. Do you realize the cross, the taking up of the cross? He said it's daily. So this means this is the cross that a lot of people never take up. It's time. Somebody to say, time out. See the cross? They don't got time out for God. Their times are so scheduled and busy, and he didn't say, take up convenience and follow me. He said, take up the cross. Somebody to say, T for time. Because there's 24 hours in a day. Boy, I ain't got enough time. We all got the same amount. But somebody say, you have to redeem it. The word redeem literally means to take it, to buy it, to make it. So, look, God's made the time, but we got to take it. And if you're too busy for God and his kingdom, that's like what Dylan was talking about. And a lot of people do that. They talk about it. It's decorative. But there's no denying of themselves. When we're talking about denying yourself, we're talking about denying my times, my plans, my calendar, my life. Because our life is just made up of time. That's why I don't like to waste it. Come on, somebody, because time is your life. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord God. And when we're in his house, we're not wasting time. Some people approach coming to his house as a time wasted because he's a pastime. If I can squeeze him in. Somebody say, we shouldn't be squeezing Jesus in anywhere. Amen. Praise God. We should be making sure that we got time for him. And that's what it is. Every day when you get up, people don't understand when you get up and the first thing you do is you take time to pray. You're taking up the cross. And the cross is not convenience. It's supposed to be something that a disciple does, which is the word discipline. It's a discipline. It, it ain't supposed to always be, you know, something fun. But somebody say it's power. Amen. Praise God. So Christianity is about time. It's about time, managing our time and making sure God's first in everything. Everybody say, if I don't have time to do God's work, if I don't have time to put God first, I'm an idol worshiper. Amen. And some people, the cross has become an idol because it is idol. I just said two different idols there. It's just sitting there like what Dylan was talking about. Somebody say, it's time to take up the cross. Amen. Yeah. Go, go, go. <laughs> and, and, and it's not time you know, the clock out. We ain't through just yet. Um, but, yeah, you, you, yeah.